Hello folks, Bob Warfield here from CNC Cookbook with another installment of GWizard University. Today we're going to go over the conversational CNC grooving wizard for lathes using our GWizard Editor software. First, what is conversational CNC and why would you use it? The idea is to make it quick and easy to produce G-code for simple tasks. Quicker and easier than having to do a CAD drawing and run your CAM software. Instead, you just answer a few questions in the conversational wizard and it'll generate the G-code right away. Conversational CNC makes it super e fast and easy to do simple parts just like you would manual machining. So let's take a look at the grooving wizard. You select your wizards here with the wizards button and you will see an array of them. These are the lathe wizards. There's a different set for milling machines. Uh, and we're going to be looking at the grooving wizard today. Okay. Now the idea is uh, they all have a very similar layout and you're going to work through the questions left to right, top to bottom. Um, so starting at the top, they all share a common top bar uh, that has things like a work offset, uh, rapid to X and Z, uh, roughing and finish tool. The grooving wizard doesn't use a separate roughing tool that's all focused on the finish tool. Uh, and the ability to turn coolant on or off. Okay. Uh, you've got all of the different parameters associated with the groove, the uh, X start and X end. Uh, if these numbers were reversed where X start was 1 and X end was 1.25, that would create an internal grooving action where you're grooving outward from a bore. Um, but we're set up here to do OD grooving. Uh, and then you've got a Z start and a Z end. Uh, the control point on the tool is the left edge of the tool and that's all adjusted for you. Um, and as mentioned here, the way the tool path is going to work, it's going to plunge during roughing towards the center, okay, leaving a finish allowance, this finish depth of cut. Uh, and then when it's done, it'll plunge each edge and turn towards the center come back, do any camfering, you have the ability to do a little corner break. Uh, don't set this too large, it's going to happen in one pass, but you can do more than three thousandths if you want. Uh, and then it's done. Okay, and so we've got a tool width, I've just got this set to the width my parting blade uses. Uh, finish, depth of cut, uh, feeds and speeds, corner break, uh, pretty simple stuff. Um, Okay, so let's give it a try. As I say, we go top to bottom, left to right, filling in the field. So, uh, you know, not don't care about work offset. Uh, let's try a, a rapid to X. Now you can see we just got an error message here. The rapid X needs to be greater than the start X. Okay, because we're trying to avoid running the tool into the workpiece, obviously. So I like to leave about a tenth of an inch. I'm going to set it to 1.35. Uh, likewise with the Z. I like my part zero uh, to actually be at zero, so I'm going to set this to uh, 0.1, a tenth, a tenth of an inch uh, larger, a hundred thousandths. And uh, well, let's see, I don't think I'm going to monkey with any of these values here uh, to begin with. Let's just see how this looks. So I hit insert to create the code. Okay, and here's all of our code created. There's comments to help you understand what's going on. Uh, we record all the different parameters uh, that were used with this wizard so you can go back and understand uh, what the assumptions were. Uh, so then the next thing I like to do is to single step through it and have a look uh, to see uh, that I understand what it's doing and that it's what I want it to do. So I'm going to turn on single block here. I'm going to rewind which turns on our uh, debugger and now I have a little more information. And I'm going to hit five step a couple of times. That jumps over five lines. Uh, we just get past the start block, all the comments, tool change. Okay, and now we're into the roughing pass. So I'm going to start just going a little bit at a time, right? And this little distance here is that little tenth of an inch uh, uh, allowance that I've given it. And we're going to come down and like I said, it's just vertically plunging uh, its way through the groove on the roughing pass. Okay. So we got what, four of these? Yeah. 
So then we've retracted. We're going to go to the finishing sp speeds and feeds. And now we're starting to finish pass. So we plunge the left edge. Okay. Got the left edge. And we're going to come over. We turned towards the center, ro rolling along the bottom of the of the groove. Uh, so, you know, make sure your tool's got a little bit of radius there so it can do that. Uh, then we come back up, retract, we go to the other side. Okay, and we're going to plunge, turn to the center, retract. Okay, so that's the finish pass. Now we got to do the camphor on the left edge, and it's a, it's a tiny little uh, 0.003 camphor, so we can't really see too much here, unless we want to blow it up. But we're going to camphor both sides. All right, taken care of. And that's basically it. The wizard's finished, does its finish block, and we're done. We're out of there. So that's how easy it is to do these kind of things uh, with the conversational CNC wizards. Be sure to check out all the rest of them and check out G Wizard Editor itself. We have a free 30-day trial. Thank you very much.